Now let's consider some of the basic image handling routines within the math script window. Begin by going to the menu strip, click on tools and select math script window. Let's move down to the command window and begin. I'm going to type PWD, stands for Print Working Directory. Often this location is not exactly where you'd like to be. I'll use CD to change directory. And then I specify my LabVIEW folder as a string constant enclosed in apostrophes. Do DIR to see my directory contents and I see a cameraman.png image that I'd placed there earlier. I'd like to remind you that you can type help followed by any of the function names that I'll be describing a little bit later. Let's take a look at this one called fread image. You can read in these three different image types and then the image pixel values are read into a two-dimensional array. Let's try this out. A equals fread underscore image. I give a string constant to refer to the image name and then a second string constant to indicate the image type. See a little bit of complaint in the error message there and that's because I typed the image name wrong. All right, it looks like we have a successful read. Next, I will use view image on the 2D array variable A. If you have multiple images to show, you can type figure to create a new plot window. Suppose this is my processed image. This will be 255 minus A. We see this generates the negative view of the original image. This way I can keep track of distinct images by figure number. If I'd like to recall, say, figure number number one, I can do that, or I can recall figure number two. So MathScript has this idea of the current or active plot window. You can create another figure and then capture that plot number to a variable. We see that C is called plot object number three. Now again, I can recall other earlier created figures, and then I can recall this newest one by referring to its variable name. Let's try placing another processed image in this third plot window. This is the transpose operator applied to the original image. All right, let's take a look at a, another useful function. I'm saying get the information for figure window number three. And in particular, I'm interested in the position indicator right there. I'm actually gonna copy that portion and then show you how you can manipulate the figure based on that position. So we say set figure number three, position attribute, which is in a string, and then you give it the array of four values. Let me change them one at a time and show you the, the results. Okay, I set this to zero. We saw that the image jumped to the far left. That's setting the X position. Let's try this one. Evidently, that's the vertical or Y position. So the origin is down here at the lower left corner. Let's see what the third value does. I'll also set that to, say, 900. See it's stretching out in the X direction. That would be our X size then, or the width. And I'm going to guess that this is the height. Let's try setting that to a smaller value. And sure enough, we see that it gets squashed in the vertical direction. So adjusting the figure dimensions is often a convenient thing. You can use close to close a figure that you no longer need. Let me pick a different figure here. You can also say close all, and that gets rid of all of the active figures. Let me try recalling the original image and displaying that. Another way that you can work with manipulating the attributes 
is with get current figure or GCF. One other attribute we might consider here is the resize attribute. So I'm saying set get current figure resize attribute to off. Now when we look at figure one, uh, no matter what you try to do here, you can't manipulate the size of that image window. And that could be helpful in some situations. To turn that off, or turn off that freezing uh, capability, we simply say set resize back to on. Now you can stretch it out as much as you like. Lastly, it might be useful to be able to place a named title by your images. Again, you enclose the title inside of a string constant. And there we see our title showing up. Hopefully this gives you a little better idea of some of the ways that you can read and display and manipulate images with the MathScript window.